Hey everybody, today I wanted to go over core SHTF items, things you're pretty much guaranteed not to survive without. So let's get right to it. It's a harsh world out there. Look at that. Nature can be harsh, but man can be just as harsh, if not more so. And if you want to survive an SHTF situation, you're going to have to be very well prepared. With food, water, and also defensive supplies. And so today I just wanted to go over some of the items that are so foundational that you probably won't survive without them. And none of the items I'm going to show you here today are particularly brilliant, but I'm not going for brilliance today. I'm going for pragmatism, right? So the first item I want to talk with you guys about, not really an item, but the first thing, you guys might laugh at me a little bit. You might think I'm being silly, but I actually strongly recommend that everybody have their own personal vegetable garden full of onions and potatoes. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. And the reason that is, is because in an SHTF situation, if you don't have a source of vitamin C locally, you're going to get scurvy and die. Right? So if you stock a ton of rice and beans, that's great. But without vitamin C, your teeth are going to fall out and you're going to die of scurvy in a relatively short period of time. So aside from stocking rice, which obviously you should be doing, rice is the, the caloric uh, lifeblood of your system. But you're going to need vitamin C as well. And you can also do uh, potatoes. I really love onions and potatoes. Uh, those are some of my favorite things in my own personal garden that I have. And potatoes have some starchy carb uh, carbohydrates as well, which is pretty difficult to get in an SHTF situation. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to get all your calories from your garden unless you have a huge proper, uh, property, like four acres or more. But it's something you're going to need, even in small quantities. Now, aside from that, of course, you're going to need fire making equipment. I mean, that goes without saying. Matches are my personal favorite because you can get a thousand of them for three dollars, right? And obviously, I've got magnifying glasses as well. I do have one fire steel. I'm not that crazy about fire steel, though, because fire steel rusts over time, and it's kind of expensive, and it's not really very convenient. But you're also going to need a ton of ammo. Don't kid yourself, because you're going to have to defend yourself, your family, your property, your food from people who didn't prepare, because all of the idiots in the inner cities who didn't prepare, right, they're going to come and, and raid your property. They're going to come attack you. If you look at past SHTF situations like Hurricane Katrina and things like that, the violence tends to start on the third day because that's when all of the idiots run out of their Cheetos or whatever they have in their pantry and they have no food stored, so they go out and they attack innocent people trying to steal their food. So you're going to need ammo. Uh, I could do a whole separate video on that, and I probably will. You're also going to need to store your ammo in a good can, ammo can like this. This is a 30 cal can. This is NATO standard. Um, you know, pretty much any NATO country, these should be readily available. Uh, I'm in the United States, so obviously these are everywhere. And these things are great. Look at that rubber seal. It keeps everything fresh. It's, uh, I also mark mine with the number uh, designating the caliber. And I just use a Sharpie. I don't really go all out with the stencils, so 7 here for 7.62 by 39, which is a caliber I'm actually gradually shifting away from, but I've used 7.62 by 39 most of my life, but I'm, I'm switching away, but that's a whole other story. Uh, these cans, though, just keep your ammo fresh. They keep temperature variations from, from affecting your ammo, keep out condensation. Obviously, you want to store these in a cool, dry place, but if you do, your ammo is going to last well over 100 years. Right? There's ammo from World War I that was well kept and still works fine, so bear that in mind. You're also going to need a cleaning kit, of course. Whether you have a rifle, pistol, or shotgun, 
you're going to need some oil, some solvent or bore gel in this case, and then I've got my, my bore brushes and my little cotton patch right here. This is, I mean, like a no-brainer, right? You need this badly. Obviously, don't put oil in your bore, put solvent in your bore, but that's a whole other story. I also wanted to mention that boots are extremely important because commercial shoes tend to go bad after about a year, right? They wear out quick. Boots last forever. Now, I don't, like, thrash on my boots, admittedly. These are moderate-use boots, okay? I take these hiking, but I'm not, you know, I've only got maybe like a 15 or 20-pound backpack. But if you look, these things look virtually new, and I've been using them for a year and a half. A little bit of fraying on the fabric, but nothing serious. Functionally, they're good as new. And whenever I buy a pair of tennis shoes or something, those things wear out after at most a year, usually six months. So boots are going to keep your feet warm, you know, for years and years and years. And you don't have to think about them. They should just be durable and reliable. These are the SWAT brand you're looking at. And I believe these are 22 ounces per boot, which is about the weight you want, where it's heavy enough to be durable, but light enough to not weigh you down. And that's the... The premise of my entire system. I want things to be durable, reliable, long-lasting, right? I mean, these things, you'll, you'll look, I got a little bit of scuffing on the heel, but that's about it. And for a year and a half of use, that's pretty amazing. Um, naturally, if I would have thrashed on these, I'm sure they'd be more used, but I, I still got really good use out of these. And so I just want to say that if your system is simple, rugged, dependable, that's going to help you survive in an SHTF situation because you're going to have to take care of yourself, your family, your property. So now's the time to get ready. You never know when an SHTF situation will pop up. So be strong, be ready, and uh, don't let any filthy criminals get the best of you.